Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be doing some stuff with this old 4L60E. Like I said, we're trying to build it so it will survive a little bit behind this uh, 408 stroker here. Um, we are going through the shift kit portion now because like I said, the valve body is like the last thing that we need to do. There is this guy here. This one actually has instructions. This one has instructions for going in and replacing some seal in the drum and also some springs. some springs too and supposedly it helps a lot with like high revving engines high revving engines yeah exactly like two to three shift three to four and kick down like you know down down shifting um so we might tear into it like i said it's not the end of the world in the last video that i made if we had to take it back out we could probably save the gasket for the pump but worst case scenario we just buy a new pump gasket this might actually include no probably not this might have it. If it's asking us to go in there, it, it should have a new seal. I don't know. You'd think so. But this thing, Transgo, always incredibly freaking like descriptive with everything. We already put that Corvette servo in. So, I mean, we might replace this. is like the only thing that they request that you replace is that blue spring. It's not even a uh, replace. They want you to put their spring inside the other spring. Oh, yeah. So, even more spring force. So, I mean, lots of engagement. It'll slam you in gears. <laughs> It's probably, I mean, not bad. And the servo is one of the problems with the uh, the band disengagement. So we'll we'll decide. There's some stuff that we're gonna might pick and choose, but we might do all of it. Taking the drum out would probably be the most inconvenient thing to do, but we can do it still. And then oh, we had other instructions here. Yeah, the accumulator. We can do that. We have all those parts right here. <clears throat> and looking through this, there's just so much stuff here. Yeah, there's that as well with the new yellow one. We're just gonna be taking this apart. I guess it shows all the different bolts, the different sizes here. Yeah, there's what size they are, how many there are. <clears throat> Some informational stuff. Oh, this goes in the pump. One of these goes in the pump. Huh? Might actually need to take the pump out again. Separator plates. I think you have to drill out some of these on the plate side, which is fine. Screwdrivers to get these uh, pistons out. Those are fine. They just sit behind the solenoids, I think. And then more piston stuff, it looks like. There's like tons of stuff in here. <laughs> but I already did a Transgo shift kit on my Mustang. Uh, overall, they're pretty easy. This looks just a bit more involved. But it says it corrects tons of stuff, holds, this is actually cool. It holds manually first, second, and third at any RPM. Vince was saying when he would be like manually shifting it, it would, what would it do? Yeah, so you could be like uh, first, and it'll stay any first, but say you go to uh, second or third, even though it says you're in third, it'll technically use first, second, and third up yeah. to that point. Use it still in drive, basically. So this will allow them to actually hold it, which would be really cool. Um, and then three to four clutch and second band burn up. Lots of just like overall stuff that will help. Also converter slip and shutter. Helps lots of stuff, so. Overall, it doesn't look like a lot of parts. Like we got these new springs and pistons as well as this guy and we might need to actually take out the pump again which kind of sucks i didn't know we'd have to do that but also not the end of the world so i think we're going to go ahead and just start taking off this electronics just unbolt the valve body separate it there's check balls in there that need to be managed but since we have this awesome stand it's all level and we won't potentially lose anything so it'd be awesome uh these look like they were all like 10 mils so we're just going to start disconnecting all the electronics um, looks like there's some clips we need to take these solenoids out with. Hopefully not lose them again. <clears throat> yeah, we still gotta get a replacement clip for, is it this guy? Yeah, I think it's this guy. Yeah, it's whatever, the solenoid's actually on the table. This sits like... Oh yeah, it's over there, yeah, that one. This guy sits in like this. Yeah, like that's the other one that goes here that we need to get a clip for. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and start turning it down, just like the other video. We're not necessarily gonna be showing, like every step this isn't like a how-to necessarily i mean you could probably follow along and figure it out but uh yeah just showing you guys us uh trying to band-aid fix this swirl 60. all right guys so we took the valve body the top part off here 
you can see all these little chuck balls. So I took some photos. We'll remember where those go. I'm just going to grab a magnet real quick and just keep in our magnetic tray. Do not drop them in the hole. Cool. And then I think we're just going to remove these plates and the accumulator, and then we can actually take the like gasket off here. And then there's a steel that we have to do some drilling on, on some select, select places. And then below that, I think are some more check balls. So probably take out this uh, second accumulator, whatever plate this is, and then start following the instructions there on, you know, what springs and, you know, whatever else needs to be replaced. I think we need to flip this over because that's where all like these uh these pistons are in here behind the solenoids so uh yeah we're just gonna continue with this kind of figure out where we're going with it but well body's off there you go all right guys so the second accumulator for some reason like the seal didn't want to come out i had to bang it on a disc until the seal released i guess so uh with this we're just going to follow the instructions Regarding the spacers, it says one for crisp to firm, two for very firm street and strip use, full race is three. So probably just going to go with two for now. And then you just stack it exactly like this diagram. Spacers, spring seat, blue piston, or blue spring, the piston, upside down, and then the spring. One, two, then the spring seat, and then the blue. And then the piston, which will go upside down, like that. And then the orange. I'm guessing it replaces this guy right here. I don't know. We'll just look up a video, but I'm pretty sure it just replaces this. So how it goes now is this orange one will be in there, like that. And then this will just push this in to make it seal and uh bolt it back up and should be good to go well, first i guess we got to get the uh first yeah. uh the new gasket on but yeah put that on i was reference a video but i'm pretty sure i've read that the the goes upside down even the the show the photo shows it upside down and it says um and saw piston has shown that even if it wasn't that way originally it's okay <laughs> so it goes on like that and it just shows that order, so I'm assuming we replaced that spring that was in there, this one. Had two springs inside each other in the center, and then that one, so. All right, guys, so uh, figured out this whole accumulator thing. So like the instructions say, it does go on like this. And then there's actually a fourth accumulator in here. Uh, if you want to grab that and show them, it's like on one of those pages. Was it? Yeah. So there is going to be that dowel that's right there. You can actually wiggle it out and pull out this cap here. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to flip it upside down and then put a new yellow spring in there. And uh, oh yeah, and you get, get this little action here. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. what do you got it on me? All right, guys, uh, this is like in the future, I guess, like a little bit, a couple hours. So we, we pretty much just like did all this. Uh, you can see here with the valve body, it's out. We've actually completed with this side and we just finished with the pump side right here. I'm just gonna quickly go over with the instructions what was done, and we're going on to the last step, which is drilling the plate right there. But from what you can see here, we showed you the accumulator and the springs and whatnot. And then right here, it's kind of exactly like this. So step one, you just replace this spring with a purple spring right behind here, pull the clip out, everything comes out. Place that. Step two, we did not do. You have to camfer the edge of this guy here, but it's just for reverse. Not so worried about that. Next one is you have to remove this guy here. There's a bolt comes out. This comes out, and then the whole assembly comes out where you have reused the original spring and then use a white spring in there. And then this part right here, there's a little dowel pin that you push up through here. If you look in there, there's the dowel. Push that up and then you need to figure out if you have the normal red spring or white spring or which one you need to use You can find that on your cir your uh, circled cent second piston number on the servo here We have a vet servo, so we know exactly which one it is. It's the white one here <clears throat> So just put that in step five, which was optional, which we did 
This is for the converter, or no, this is for first gear, basically being able to hold your shifts. So you remove this solenoid right here, everything behind it, you put the new one in and the spacer, pretty easy. And then step six, um, I don't even know what this is called, but you replace that spring, basically, that's it. And then one other thing, which is this, you have the ISO conv valve, ISO converter valve. This is for like torque converter, I believe. So it goes in right here. You remove this clip, everything comes out. Then you put this new one in with the hex bolt. The hex bolt's just for holding it. You push it all the way through and then kind of scrub it, which cleans it. And then put pull it out, put the new blue spring in, which we did. And then there's also some other stuff, oversized valve, oversized valves, because I guess the walls in there can get worn out. That's why you might need an oversized one. Ours felt good. And then what we just did was this guy right here for the pump regulator. You take the C-clip out, everything comes out here, put the orange, two orange springs, the aluminum spacer, and then the actual boost valve, oh, push that in, and then it's good to go. So literally the last thing we need to do is we need to get the drill bits that are included, clean this up I bet, and then drill winding up areas. Basically it's for these screens in case they get gunked up. It just always allows fluid to pass through. So just a bit more efficient. We're gonna do that last here and uh, probably put it together and be done. There is some more stuff that did, it did come with, like I mentioned for the uh, input drum. Not saying we can't do that later. We can still do it. We're, we've not put this in the car yet. <laughs> So we can still do it. I'll do some more reading into it. Basically, we just need to take the pump off, take that out, take the input drum out, and then put those things on and then the springs, which would actually require us to take all the clutches out again too, which would be really annoying. You know you wanna. No. You know you wanna. All right, so like I said, we're just gonna go ahead and drill this out, put it on, and uh, probably be done for today. All right guys, so we got this part done. You can see all these points that they're pointing to where you drill it. And for high stall converter, we also drilled out that one. We did 93 pretty much on all of them, like it mentions for high stall and whatnot. Then we also had this little screen guy. You'll drill two holes on it and then you place the spring in. You can see it right here. Vince is touching it. Yeah, this guy. So basically what this screen does is sometimes under high RPM or just like high speed it collapses and doesn't allow fluid through which burns up your clutches so you put those two holes in as well as that flip it upside down yeah goes in like that looks weird but that's how it's going to sit inside there and uh, it'll hold the screen open so all these holes were drilled the ones that were mentioned on there so we uh went ahead and uh cleaned it up then these also have vb and ca CA stands for case, that goes towards the case. VB stands for valve body. So uh, yeah, so we'll do this, this is all ready to go on. What we're gonna do is line this up. We're going to get the uh, accumulator on right here. And then we can get the actual valve body in. Or I guess get the, we have to get the check balls in, but they just go in there. I took a photo of, you know, where they go. You can actually kind of see where they're supposed to go. They just go into these like holes here. So there's seven total in, in our application, maybe not yours, but most of them seven. So uh, I believe the Corvette has six, just a little tidbit. But uh, yep, we're gonna go ahead and line this up, get a valve body on and uh, be finally done. Trans Am time. All right guys, we just finished with the whole shift kit dealio because uh, we just wanted to get it done. There's a uh, layering this back on, it basically went gasket, the metal sheet that we had drilled, another gasket, and then the accumulator. And then, useful tip, this part is really fucking hard to get back on, the shifter selector. You'd actually want to get this hooked up before you actually bolt down the valve body. Because we were working on this and trying to get this to work, and I accidentally dropped this little pin part, and it fell inside the transmission, so we had to take it apart again. That was its own bitch. It was annoying. like. But we got it done, and it is now back together, finally. Got all the electronics plugged in. We're only missing the clip for this solenoid. Um, it flung somewhere over there under the table. But uh, all in all, this transmission is complete. Now the tra Trans Am has full permission to come on over. Prepare yourself. I'm just going to flatbed it over tonight, I bet. 
But yeah, this was a uh, freaking uh, Transgo. Amazing instructions on everything. Like, you don't usually get instructions on this stuff, which is really cool. So we did all that. Unfortunately, we did not do this one here because there's a lot of springs and shim. We should have looked in the Transgo box when we were doing the initial part of the rebuild because we were deep in there because that yeah. been perfect time. I did mention we did take this out to get, you know, that, that uh, the shift lever fork or whatever. We didn't go that deep. We, yeah, we did take the whole drum out, but it would still require us to take apart the drum, all the clutches to knock out some stuff, and then it was it would be a huge hassle. Like, down the road, if we want to put the reinforced drum or the drum reinforcement, as well as the shift kit stuff, we can. It did have good benefits, but, I mean, it's whatever. But, yeah, we we're just going to uh, end it off here, get the pan. We still need the pan, actually, off the Trans Am and the tail housing. But we might clean this and paint it before that happens. Vince is probably bringing over the Trans Am next week uh, or, you know, whenever. No rush or anything like that. But once it's there, we're going to basically give it the Project F treatment and pull everything out. <laughs> like, leave it for two years. Yeah, leave it for two years. Ah. And we'll have two F bodies, you know, over here. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> One is enough. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll go fast. Once we have the motor and trans out, we're just going to strip them, put them on that motor. He's, He's just ready for suicide. There we go. I like our driveway space. It's not, nice having it. I like, our, it's I like my driveway space and not F bodies. So, anyways, this is done. Next part will probably be taking the Trans Am apart to get the stuff ready for this motor and trans, throw it in and get it tuned up. And uh, then the Trans Am will be back up and running with a 408 stroker and a semi built 4060. Yep, so uh, that's going to do it, guys. Check out our uh, Patreon. We're working in our garage with Crap. with hand tools. Davis is getting injured because you guys won't Dude, put it in the shop. Yeah, Yikes. And then there's like trans fluid is soaked bandages. You it's know, fine. It, it'll kill bacteria, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? Antiseptic for sure. Yeah. For sure. So, uh, yeah, check out our other videos. A lot of Trans Am stuff, Mustang 3800 Bonneville stuff. We're building the motor for Tristan's Bonneville for like the fifth time. And uh, hopefully the last time. <laughs> and uh, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment down below.